Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Women Studio. Hey guys, welcome to my studio. It has been a month. So this is Floss Tube 160, I think. I just looked it up. Yep. <laughs> Floss Tube 160. It's good to be back. I've been wanting to do a video since I got home from the Quilter Station Retreat. But it has been busy. We are dog sitting. So that is Bubba, that is Kyle's dog. Kyle went with Jerry down to Florida to pack up the house. And a moving company is coming tomorrow to get the big pieces of furniture and everything. And then they're driving it back here because guess what? Mom and Jerry found a place to live here. And I'm so happy, so happy. Because you know, until they actually found a place, I just wasn't sure if it was really gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like. If they couldn't find a place, then obviously they were just going to have to go back home to Florida. And I just didn't want that to happen. So, thanks be to God that they found a place right down the road from us. It's in the same park as Bree and Eric and the grandkids live. They are like right around the corner, a couple of streets down. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Their house is bigger than the house they have. It's not a house, but the pla their place, their new place is, I mean, probably almost double the size of what they have now. The kitchen that they have in Florida is very tiny. The kitchen in their new place is large. <laughs> it is nice and big. They have, instead of one bedroom, they have three bedrooms instead of one bathroom and a very small bathroom at that. They have two very good sized bathrooms. So I'm so happy for them, just so happy. So, and happy for all of us because we will get to see them all through the year now. I know they're not excited about being here in the winter, but we will make it worth their while. And I told her, your house is big enough. I think we'll have Christmas at your house. <laughs> Anyways, that's what's happening in our world on a personal level. This Saturday, one of my very best friend's daughters is getting married and the reception is at my friend's house. Oh, like, wow. I, their place is amazing, but I just, she's so stressed and I just, I can't even imagine taking that on. But I'm going over there Friday afternoon, no, like 10 o'clock in the morning and helping with flowers and just help in any way I can because holy Toledo, that's, that's a lot. But anyway, that's what's happening on a personal level. On a work level, I'm up to my eyeballs <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I just got the strike offs in for a fabric line. I just spent the afternoon color, you know, comparing and making sure the line is cohesive and making notes. And I just got that sent off. Also, when I returned from the Quilter Station Retreat, there were two projects due. One was past due, but thank goodness she gave us a grace period, me and Liz Matthews. <laughs> it's for the Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine, and her and I both completely forgot because of Expo, and then right after Expo, leaving and prepping for, you know, Quilter Station Retreat. Totally slipped our minds. Anyways, got that. So I got home Monday, like at dinner time. Tuesday, I designed the two smalls that I needed to do. I stitched the one and had it stitched, fully finished, photographed, and sent by just this past Sunday. No, Saturday, just past Saturday. By the way, today is Tuesday, September 20th. And then, then I immediately started stitching on the other one. I can't tell you what it's for. It's for something that's coming up in December that's going to rock your world. I can't say any more than that, but it's a small Christmas ornament that I designed. I got it stitched and fully finished 
and to the person that needed it yesterday. <laughs> so I have been stitching and I have been working my fingers to the bone, but it's nothing I can show you, which makes me really, really sad. This is probably going to be a chopped up video because it is 3.30. I have so much to talk about, so much haul, oh my gosh, and then I forgot to bring my stitching down here, so I'm definitely going to be piecing this together. Also, somebody requested a little sh video of my Halloween tree, and I'm like, heck yeah, I would love to share that, and not only share it, but this is the time of year to share it, so I will be doing that. You wouldn't believe it, but the Halloween book Okay, before Expo was over, I had to reorder it. We knew by the pace of the show we were going to run out. We had like an order for 300 of them. We had an order for 150 and a lot of them were like 50 and 60. I mean, it was just like, what? So, God, where do I even start? Needlework Expo blew our minds we were overwhelmed we were shocked <laughs> we are full of gratitude thank you everyone who pre-ordered with your shop i mean wow i never dreamed that an expo show would outdo a nashville market because nashville just because it's cash and carry and you know, I don't know, the Nashville market's just always like huge. Well, Expo succeeded that and we were just like, wow. So so poor Kevin didn't get to go with me to Missouri for the culture station retreat. Not that he would have hung out at the retreat, but he was gonna go with me and just when you have that many orders, it just, uh, you can't, you can't. He had to stay here and work. We hired our older son, Kyle, and he worked with Kevin to get the orders out. So I reordered it, and then I, today I had to reorder it again, and I'm like, I said to Kevin, I'm like, it seems like by now everyone that likes to do Halloween stitching must already have this book. Like, we didn't know how much to reorder and reprint because we don't want to print a ton and then be sitting on them. Ah! You know, but you want it, you have to print enough to make it worthwhile. Otherwise, the price per book is ridiculously expensive. So it's a whole, it's a whole game we play as designers when you print a book. That is one thing. So there's there's pluses and minuses to both. Printing a book is wonderful because you you can just call your or you know I do everything online with my publisher and just reorder it. They send it and it's ready to go. That's the wonderful part. The hard part is knowing how much to order and then having storage for those books. That's difficult because when it's a pattern that we stuff, we can print it on demand, which makes it nice in the long run. But when you have a needlework expo like we just had, uh, 309 and 310, um, Whimsy Witches, Angry House, and Tabby's Halloween, holy Toledo. Boy, did we stuff some patterns <laughs> and I helped with shipping a few days I helped with stuffing patterns as much as possible but I'm I was trying to prep for quilter station retreat I had 150 kits to put together I mean it was just insanity but we made it through and we are not complaining whatsoever we are grateful just feel so full of gratitude so anyways I was off to Missouri on my own, it was fine. Uh, I drove seven hours one day and then five hours the next day. My husband's calling. I got to get the phone. Hello? Yeah, so the company, the company that we sent the 300 books to, the post office was very mean to those packages. And they were ripped open and all 300 books were damaged. Yeah. So Kevin's at the post office talking to them and they just said they need to... Okay, I, I got to take care of this. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> ah, so I had to hurry and email 
the shop so that they didn't dispose of the books that were damaged because they have to take them to the post office and to file a claim, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but. So, <laughs> Quilter Station, I'm not gonna go over all of the projects. As designers, we don't get each other's projects anyway, so I don't have all that to show you. I have, I think, a video of the tables, the trunk show that we uh, brought, and um, Alma's uh, table. I think that's all I have. So I'll put those at the end of the video, if I remember. Um, there are several recap videos about the Quilter Station Retreat called Cross Stitch Extravaganza. I would recommend Pam and Steph. That I think they were the first ones that did theirs. Uh, Liz from um, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. And then the Sable Stitchers, they did a really good one too. I haven't watched hers, but I heard the Proper Stitcher did a video, a recap video of the retreat as well. So these are people that I will list below that you can go and watch their recap video because I don't have all the stuff that they got. So I'm just going to show you. Just gonna show you what I offered and what I gave, what my project was. Jeez, I can't even talk. So, this is what dogs. This was my project. Sorry for the glare. When I designed this, it was February of this year. February in Michigan is just very gloomy. We might have sunshine three days out of the month. I mean, it's so gloomy. So when I was designing this, I had a red house. I had like pink, rosy color flowers. It was very spring looking because I was dreaming of spring. And thank goodness before I sent it to the model stitcher, which was Mary Schreiner of Michigan, I it ding, ding, ding in my head. I was like, oh, that's right. This is going to be fall. I went back into my computer program and I changed all the colors to fall colors. And I love it even more. This is called Pernice Manor. Pernice is Italian for partridge. I think I told them it was British. I don't know, but in the writing, in the pattern, I said it was Italian. You know, when you're on a microphone in front of 150 people, you know, your mind kind of goes blank sometimes, or you say things and you, it even happens when I do a floss tube. You say things, you know, incorrectly and you don't catch it. So my, I had a whole story about this design, which when I release this, which will be a year from now, probably Needlework Expo 2023 is when I will release this design. And the whole story will be in that pattern at that time. There's just a few things I wanna talk about and share with you about the design. I put wild animals in with domestic animals. There's a cat, a dog, and a goat that are domestic animals. And then we have a deer and a rabbit and the butterflies and the birds. Mixing those two together, it was a way for me to symbolize harmony, that all these animals are getting along in this beautiful landscape. The other thing I wanted to mention is the goat. So when we, we bought our house 20, I think it was 21 years ago, yeah, it was 21 years ago. We moved in in June. No. Yes. Yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> we moved in in June of 2000. In one. 2001. Yep. Because 9-11 was that September after we moved in. Anyways, we're the second owners of this home. This is not my home. I'm not saying that, but I'm not, it's not a two-story home. 
the man that built the house, ah, the man that built the house, when he cleared the land, there was just tons of poison ivy. And he found out that goats eat poison ivy. So he had a goat and the goat just grazed all day, every day and ate all the poison ivy. He was not a gardener, so it was not a big deal that he had that. Now, I said to Kevin, because the poison ivy is starting to creep up in all my flower beds, it's starting to show its, rear its ugly head. And I said to Kevin, we need to get a goat. But obviously we're not gonna get a goat. I think it would be fun to get a goat, but they would also eat my hostas and my all my other flowers, so it's just not gonna happen. So if anyone has any tips on how to get rid of poison ivy without killing everything else in the flower bed, well, let me know. So anyway, this is what I offered everyone. I love it, it's framed by Paula at Craft Gallery. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the story that will be wrapped up in a little booklet when I can release this next year. So what they got is this box that's all custom designed with images from the sampler. And on those other videos, this is going to be repeated, obviously. So I had this all nicely packaged inside and sealed with one of my logo stickers. So here's the cover of the design and inside of this package. Wow, that's really a lot of glare. This is what the cover looks like. And then uh, inside was all of their threads and I just gave them full skeins. You know, I weighed the odds of buying and giving them a full skein of something that they might just need a tiny bit of. I weighed that against spending the time to measure and cut and then wrap it onto something or put it on a floss drop. And I thought, you know what, time for me is money. And I, <laughs> I knew I wouldn't have time to do all of that. So I just gave them full skeins, like for instance, carrot, they didn't need much carrot, but they had a full skein. I was nervous putting carrot into this design. I thought it would be too bright. I think of carrot is something you use for snowmen noses or you use it for pumpkins, like an aug uh, August, oh my gosh, a autumnal, which I mean, this is fall, but I just thought it would be too bright. But it was actually the pop of color that this design really needed and it's only in a few spots so it's only in the center of those flowers a little bit in there and then on these two butterflies it's the only place it's used but it was perfect because without that it just it really made the design pop i guess that's all i can really say about that okay and then they got a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha which was what that was, model was stitched on and then i gave them this small little card this little card i might be doing more of these for small designs you know i have those teenies they're called teeny named after my dog because we call her teeny woo her name is athena but we call her teeny woo <laughs> so i came up with you know teenies and they're, you know, they're like this big and they're like $2 cheaper than my regular patterns. But I really like these cards and uh, I might be doing some of these instead in place of doing the teenies and having them packaged. I might just print the cards. But anyway, I wanted them to have a small piece that they could get done quickly that would be a little memento because it says cross stitch extravaganza. 2022 and then down there it says quilter station hosted by quilter station lee summit missouri well quilter station is in lee summit the retreat was actually in independence missouri and these are all suburbs of kansas city what else i don't have the other stuff in here what i do with it well, I'll be ding ding. They got a, well, you'll see it in, <laughs> you'll see it in other people's videos, but they got a label to put on, oh, it's right here. Jeez, Trace. They got a label 
to put on the back of their sampler when they're done stitching it. It's got a picture of Perniche, Perniche Manor and then designed by, you know, it's got all the information of where the design came from and then they can bequeath it to somebody stitched by blah 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 started and finished and then they got this cool needle minder which i thought turned out really cute and then just a business card and one of my logo stickers so that is that and this is the only box i have left i had a a lot of boxes left from the farm girl gatherings in may so anyway this is the only one left okay what can I say about Quilter Station Retreat other than I had a fabulous time. My goal was to talk to everyone there, 150 people. So the way they have it set up is all the tables are in rows and everyone's facing the front of the room. I went row by row. I started in the back because, you know, it always, I don't know, I just feel like people in the back feel like they get gypped maybe. <laughs> No, I wanted to make sure the people in the back, you know, definitely I got to speak with them. So anyway, I went row by row, started Thursday afternoon, and I did, you know, Friday, and I finished up Saturday pretty much right before I went on and did my presentation. So I was very thankful to do that because I really got to talk to everybody, and everyone had fun stories, and I asked them what they're stitching on, and I got to see their what they're working on and it was just so amazing i got to meet uh elizabeth ann can stitch i hadn't met her yet i hadn't met uh olivia b i got to meet her i got to meet lenny from sable stitchers i've met roberta lyle before from sable stitchers i've met pam and steph before and jean at the attic i'd met her before a really fun thing that i truly enjoyed was getting to know rita better I mean, I've met Rita obviously at Nashville over the years. She was really one of the one of the shops that really pushed me to design cross stitch. But I've never really sat and spoke, talked with her, had conversations with her. You know what I mean? I went out with her for dinner every single night. It was amazing. So nice to get to know her. Her store is like, oh. God, I wanted everything in there. It was very inspiring. It made me want to get back get back into the thought process even of just designing some wool applique because you know I have a lot of designs that lend themselves to wool applique I mean I could just see Perniche Manor that house with that bird on top oh my heavens that would be incredible as a wool applique so it just inspired me because she has a lot of wool applique pieces in there she has tons of quilts and oh, all these bolts of fabric just all the reds together and going into the you know all the oranges together it was just eye candy to the nth degree the other thing i really enjoyed was getting to know linda lautenschlager of chessie and me her and i i think we met for the first time this past uh nashville in march and you know we were like oh my gosh we're gonna be together at culture station and we went out, we spent a lot of time together and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I got to spend more time with Jean at the attic. Ah, that was great. The last night went out to dinner. Uh, just getting to know people that I see at Nashville, but it's like, boom, you know, they're in, they're getting their order. They don't have time to visit. And it was just really nice. But I thoroughly enjoyed meeting every single person there. And just a really good time just a really good time if you have not been to a retreat you know do your best to try to go and you know there's virtual retreats too if you can't travel my battery died on my camera I'm not even sure what I was talking about but let's move on I think I'm gonna go right into haul that I got on my way back from Quilter Station because that's what I've been talking about is the retreat. So on my way home, I thought I deserved <laughs> to, have, to have a little downtime. And, you know, it's a 12-hour drive straight through. So obviously with stops and we're talking 13, 14 hours. And so I broke the days up into two days. 
somebody, no, it was um, Roberta Lyle from Sable Stitcher. She told me about Artichoke Annie's. And I, I remember seeing the sign on the side of the road on my way to the retreat. But on the way to the retreat, I had to bust butt to get there. And I got there just in time to unload my stuff, set up my trunk show, and like <clears throat> go to my room and change clothes because I was a sweaty mess. <laughs> and then get back down there for it to start. So I had no time to waste on the way there. On the way home though, I had a little more time. So I was thankful that she mentioned Artichoke Annie's. On the way to that, I saw on the side of the road, the Brass Armadillo antique store. So I got off and I that was the first place I stopped. So I don't know that I'm gonna remember what I got where, but I can tell you, after I went to the Brass Armadillo, I went to Artichoke Annie's. Those were both in Missouri. And then when I got closer to home, uh, Great Lakes Antique Mall, I saw a sign. Actually, I was getting off to use the bathroom at a McDonald's. And then I saw a sign for that same exit for this antique mall. And the antique mall was right next door to the McDonald's. So it was absolutely perfect. So hold on a second. Let me scoot you over. The Brass Armadillo was my first stop. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. I got some books, y'all. You know that I like to finish on books. It's cute. It's even got the library. Um, whatever. It's got the library thingy on it. And somebody asked me, I just want to talk about this real quick. Somebody asked me, what is my criteria for purchasing antique books for finishing? It was a really good question. My criteria or whatever is price, number one. Like this book here was $2.50. I love the color. First, first it's color. That's what attracts me to it. So I'm looking for red, orange, black, navy blue, you know, whatever would suit my color palette in my designs. So that attracts me first. Then also thickness. Uh, I don't really want a really thick book. I did finish something. I, I don't even know where it's at or what it was. But I did finish something on a thicker book and it's just too cumbersome and it, you know, it's heavy and I have to take these to market and anywho. So a standard kind of thickness of, of a children's book, I guess you could say. So color attracts me, then I look at the thickness and then I go for price. I don't pay a lot. This one, like I said, was $2.50. I go from, you know, that up to like five, seven maybe. Now, if it's a really unique size or a really unique color, I will go up to 10, but I don't think I've ever spent over $10 on a book because I know I can get them cheaper at other places. I found this orange book, which is so fabulous for Halloween. What did I pay for it? Out of curiosity. Oh, guess what? It was free. This must be one where they had a... Yeah. They had a sticker on it and she took it off. So I don't know what I paid for. Actually, I can look right here. On my, on my receipt, imagine that. Five dollars. Oh, and I thought it was funny, but it says Jerry goes fishing because you know Jerry. Anyways, I love these shovels. Now they could they could be used as either a fireplace shovel or it could have been used for a coal stove shovel. And that could that might depend on like how old the shovel is, um, depending on what it was used for. 
was it just for a fireplace or anyway I just purchased one on eBay because I love these things I love finishing on them putting your piece right here and it was pricier than what I normally pay this one here was $17 which is actually kind of high but the one I purchased on eBay I, when I get it I will show it to you it's red very very chippy but it has a very fancy handle on it out of the metal and then at the top it has a jewel it's so cool I cannot wait to get that so the brass armadillo was it was a big store it took me a while to go through it this little hardware drawer look at it's got a little handle on it but can't you just see like sewing accoutrement in there like strawberries or I don't know or even just little figurines or whatever I just thought this was really cool and it has metal these are metal instead of wood I thought that was really unique and then all of that was housed in this amazing box this chippy grungy box They just don't make things this cool anymore. Look at that paint. Look at that patina on there. Oh my gosh, I love it. And these handles, these handles fold down. But when you do it like this, they stop. So it makes it very easy to, to uh, move around and to carry. Um, but this is just an old, you know, toolbox. It obviously at one time had a tray that sat in it because it's got, you can't see it, but it's got like ledges, a ledge on each side where you would have a tray and you, and it, those trays usually had a handle on it. You could take the tray out. Anyway, this thing is, I just love the paint on it. It's just gorgeous. Feels like Christmas. I don't even remember what I have in here. Feels like it's breakable though, so. Oh yes. I'm gonna use this as a button, antique but button jar, button. I say button. I know it's a button, but we say here in the Midwest, button. <laughs> but look how cool that is. Love that. And for this one, it was the shape of the jar that I loved. It's pretty dirty. I'm going to have to clean that up. Nice, rusty, grungy lid. Again, super cool with putting buttons in there. First, the very first booth I went in in Artichoke Annie's, it was, you know, glass cases and stuff like that. And I really was on the hunt for another sewing bird because I collect the sewing birds. I love them. I've bought two at an antique store and the rest I have bought on eBay and it's just it's fun when you have something specific you're looking for it's like a treasure hunt and I just ah, I love doing that <laughs> anyways I did find one it was $195 which is more than I've ever paid for one and it didn't actually have a bird it was it wasn't I, I didn't really like the looks of it so I didn't I and I thought it was too expensive so I didn't get it but I found this cute thing now, how adorable would that be? Hangs on the wall. I mean, this is all wood, you guys. How they bent this and all the, it's just teeny tiny and cute. And I wanna put it on the wall. And I have made clay figurines in the past. Like you'll see them in my cover designs or my covers for my patterns and stuff. If I can use them, if it works, I do. But anyways, a cute little clay, you know, figurine sitting in there would be cute. Even a small cross stitch sitting in there and leaning against the wall. Super cute. I just love antiques. Oh, he's going to hurl. Come on, let's go outside. I love tin stuff, guys. And I collect all kinds of tin things. Love this. Great advanced... For modern cookery. <laughs> Spry makes tempting digestible foods. 
improves flavor in deep and pan frying. Make delicate, delicious cakes and tender flaky pie crust. Tested and approved by Good Housekeeping Bureau. My gosh, it's so cute. Another super fun tin find. This has a circus going around it. I These, anytime you find a pail, a child's pail or a little, like this, they called it a little lunchbox. I'm sorry, but I'm, I was way more hungry than just what this would allow when I was a kid. How cute. Look at the elephants on the back. Oh my gosh. This was a cool find, especially if you can get the lid. But I love the red handle. Oh my gosh. It's just adorable. And just, you know, basic inside. But oh my gosh. That will be so cute on my shelf over here with my collection of tin. This frame cracked me up. I thought it was wood. Does that not look like a wood frame? It's actually metal. So I think this would be really cool to have a piece in there. A, um, to design a piece that would fit in there. I'm sorry I'm watching Kyle's dog. He just got sick and so I'm kind of keeping an eye on him. Now this I don't like the way it looks right now, but I love what it is. And I'm going to, of course, antique it more and grungy it up. But this little heart-shaped frame stole my heart. Look at that. But definitely going to grungy it up because I don't like the bright gold. But oh my goodness, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted one of these <laughs> dolls. You'll, you'll see this doll, I'm sure, in one of my co covers eventually. But these cool little china dolls. Obviously, she would have had a dress or something on, but um, super cute. It's really cute, guys. It's really cute. It'll be so cute sitting on a shelf. When I go antiquing, I'm looking for things... Obviously, like sewing accoutrement that's good for display or to use in photography for my staging. Also, I'm looking for finishing pieces. So I have things in mind of what I want to use them for. This, I love this little glass jar. Nothing like spectacular or anything, but I thought it was cute. I gotta go get his dog. Oh. I love, I I finished a punch needle in a little um, cast iron dish before. And I loved that this one was red. I don't think I've ever seen one this color. But anyway, a cute little punch needle or even a cross stitch. Or you could make a pin cushion coming out of the top of that. I just thought there's a million things you could do with that. Okay, maybe not a million. Now this I bought to make into a pincushion. Look at this cool piece. Isn't it cool? Stuff that and make a pincushion out of it. I love it. I found this strawberry, or this tomato that has the strawberry. And then I found just a, a strawberry. All right, I gotta get them. The other thing I like to look for is uh, religious antiques, like little statues and, and, and vintage things like that. So I found this. I absolutely love this. I, this is going to go up in my house. It looked better without this piece of string on it. Give me one sec. Okay. So look guys, now watch, look at that, this is, this is the angel, is it called the Annunciation, where the angel comes to Mary and tells her, asks her to be the mother of God, anyways, 
Um, and look at the two angels on the side. Oh, this is a treasure. I am super, super happy to have this. I've never seen anything like this, and I love it. And then I bought this. It's like a little change coin purse thing. I think I paid like two bucks for it or something like that. But I thought you can make this. It's leather. So I thought it would be fun to make it into a needle book of some sort. You know, cover the front of it with um, some needlework. It's got a little snap in it. And then in here, maybe put something in there that you would put your needles in. Or even just packages of needles could go in there. I don't know, but I thought that was really cute. Then, more books. Books! Books, 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 books! I'm so happy. Like, look at this crazy orangish red colors. Another kind of orangey, grungy book. Love it. I thought this green would work well for spring. Look at this blue. Ah! Love the blue. Another beautiful green color for Christmas or spring. I mean, anything. And then a nice faded kind of orange, which would be good for fall. This is a really thin book. I like the size of this one. It's a little bit bigger. It'd be good for punch needle. Yeah. Compared to this is kind of the average size book I get. And then this. Oh, I forget what these are. Oh my gosh, I forgot what, they're not to make candles, but they're to make, I don't remember. It said on the sign, I don't know, maybe it'll be on, on the receipt if I can find the receipt. Some receipts, they list exactly what the thing was, but sometimes it doesn't. I had an idea of what I wanted to do with this, and I can't remember now. Oh, well, I know what it was. Jeez, trees. To put, uh... A piece on here whether it's punch needle or cross stitch and then you could kind of fill these sugar cones I think you make sugar cones like I think they I want to say it's a sugar cone. I think you put sugar in there and pack it down I don't remember I'm gonna have to look it up but anyways um, stuff those kind of full and then put those fake candles you know those battery operated candles a couple votives in there and then have a piece a finished piece on the outside I think it would be really cool I saw several breadboards and I used to collect them a lot because I used to paint on them I have quite a collection going and I don't have time to paint anymore but I could not resist this one because of this white and that it had the little handle on it the little knob on it and that so I I had to have this one and it was pretty cheap but uh, yeah these are nice Okay, so the last store that I went to was the Great Lakes Antique Mall, I think was the name of it. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Found some little treasures there as well. Oh, I have finished on these before. I know you guys have seen the little um, chalkboard. This one says Made in Portugal. The little chalkboard. Uh, for kids back in the day, that's what they did their problems on and stuff like this. This one is really cool. Look, it's got the... I don't know why that was, that they why they put that around there. If anyone knows, let me, let me know. I'm curious. Just maybe to make it a softer edge for them? I don't know. But I love it. It's missing a little bit here. It's kind of cool that way. But yeah, they make, they're great for finishing on. I found this quilt, y'all. This was the first thing I found when I went, went into that store. Because it is like kind of Americana with the reds. I love the reds. Reds, pinks, blues, whites. Some gray in there. Isn't it pretty? Well, what really intrigued me was it's really faded on the back, so you can't really see. But the back was made with feed feed sacks I guess you call them see that right there isn't that cool so that's the back was made with those love it 
But yeah, it's a good size. Good size quilt. Love this metal vintage tray. Oh my gosh, this would be cute. Wouldn't it be cute just lined with tomatoes? Not like edible ones, but you know, sewing tomatoes. That'd be cool. I mean, there's so many things you could decorate in this. I could even just use it for pens and pencils in my studio. Another thing that I like to collect and I don't have much of is uh, anything to do with art. And this is Robin Hood watercolors. Robin Hood shoots with Little John in Sherwood Flo Forest. Art Crayon Company, Bro Brooklyn, New York. So, you know, being an art studio, I like to have, you know, some of these little antique things sitting around. All right, here we are on to more books. Oh, I like this light blue. Look at this light blue. It would be so nice for Americana. Is that black? No, but it's a nice navy blue. I think I'm all set with antique books for a while, y'all. A nice red. Oh, it's raining out. A nice grungy blackish gray, just like a charcoal color. That's pretty. And then look how small this book is, like compared to that one. I guess it's not that much smaller, but I like the color of this one. It's kind of a, just a mustardy color but it's small. What do you think? I think that was a lot to get from three stores. Oh wait, I started to tell you this and I don't know if that was when the dog was getting sick. I don't know. Anyways, the very first booth I went into in Artichoke Annie's, I told Roberta Lyle about this, like, thank you for sending me there because I bought an antique sampler. It's actually two antique samplers. Oh, the glare is horrible. Dog on it. Horrible, horrible. Well, anyway, I want you to see, I want you to see the alphabet. How this alphabet is stitched. Is that not cool? It's very cool. And it's small. And then look, her sister, I can't, it's so backwards. Her sister did this one. So when I... When I was checking out, the lady, the cashier said to me that the lady's booth I bought this from, she is from England. And she said, matter of fact, she's over there right now because of the Queen's death. And she brings things back from England. And she said, they go quick. She said, you're very lucky to have found that. And I'm like, you are not kidding me. <laughs> you are not kidding. So it says, pair of samplers. Melvina Hotting, age 12, year 1856, and then Laura Hotting, H-A-W-T-I-N-G, um, 1852. Yeah. I love these, and they're small. These will be fairly quick to chart, um, Kyle. So, Kyle, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Oh, wait. But wait, there's more. I got two more things. And then and then that's it for my antique haul. Okay. I found this at the Brass Armadillo. That was the first one I stopped at. And I when I got it home, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, why is it made this way? Why is this slanted? So this is my theory. This has like slots on each side. So my theory is that this would sit on a counter and the person working at the store would be behind the counter because the drawers are back here. And I bet there was like some sort of sign here. Maybe it would have the prices or, you know, I don't know. But this is obviously a place to slide some sort of sign into it. And then back here, it has all the colors of the writ dye. And then, as you can see inside, hold on, if I can do this without dropping. Oh, Lord have mercy, <laughs> this is dangerous. Anyway, you can see all the, the little 
cabinets, little, not cabinets, the little cubbies that they would house the rip dye. Anyways, it's really cool, isn't it? <laughs> Love it. Then last but not least, so I found this little pin cushion inside of a glass, you know, cabinet. And a lot of times that just turns me off because I'm like, oh, now I got to go find somebody to get the thing out. But I could not resist this adorable pincushion. Well, I didn't know the head and tail moved until she opened that cabinet. And when she brought it out to me and his little head was moving. And look, his little tail is also moves, but not quite as much as the. So what it is, is if you look on the bottom, it's just this metal long metal piece that creates the tail and the head and that's why it bobs like that is that, not, is that not adorable it's just so cute he had to come home with me i need to give him a name he's a little poodle he's got those little tufts of fur i mean it's just <laughs> it's so cute i am gonna take a little break and put all of these things away and then, depending on how long that takes, I will either continue to record or I will finish this up tomorrow. I don't know. Okay, I'm putting stuff away. And I had to laugh. I never even noticed what that said. It says, never say die, say writ. That is so cool. We are having a thunderstorm. It's 5 o'clock and it looks like it's about 8.30. So I think I'm gonna have to call it, call it for today. And hopefully tomorrow it will be light and bright in here. Uh, I do just really quick wanna say, I don't know if Rita watches Floss Tube, I actually don't think she does, but I love you Rita. <laughs> we really had a great time together and she is a fantastic host and her retreats are amazing and uh, she had these handmade baskets that she gave to all of us designers and i love how primitive this basket is so thank you thank you thank you rita for first of all for inviting me to be part of this amazing event and also for the gift and for just such a fun, fun weekend. Such a fun weekend. So much gratitude. Before I go, I got home late Monday. As I said, I was just nose to the grindstone designing and stitching those two smalls that I needed for a couple of different things. And then Sunday, I'll insert a picture of somebody I finally got to meet. A fellow Michigander, beautiful Rachel from Floss Toss, also Treehouse Fiber Arts. She is partnered up with Sue uh, Stokes of um, Legacy Fiber Arts. She has dyed, I know I talk about them all the time, but she has dyed uh, knitting yarn for many years and now she dyes linen and Ada as well and she's really good at it. <laughs> so they have teamed up. Sue does the dyeing. She sends it to Rachel. Rachel is the closer or the finisher. The closer, I think sounds cool. Anyways, she does, you know, the surging and the pressing and the packaging and, and all of that. And anyways, I have an upcoming retreat that they did the linen for. And I'm so happy so so happy her and i met she lives around grand rapids area which is i thought it was like three hours away but anyway i drove an hour she drove an hour we met in dewitt which is just north of uh, east lansing and we met at culver's and we sat down and talked like we had known each other our entire lives like i think partly because <laughs> We both have floss tubes, so she watches mine, I watches, I watches hers, I watch hers and Sue's. And so, you know, you kind of have a feel for what that person is like as far as mannerisms and what they're interested in and what they like and all that kind of thing. So 
we had the best conversation. I could not believe how much time had passed. I felt like it was a blip, just a short, short visit, but yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. We could have stayed there all day. So I said, next time we need to do this and make like a whole afternoon of it and bring our stitching. And I'd like to find maybe a nicer place than Culver's. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to work on that. But I mean, an hour drive. Hello. We can totally do that. So anyways, such a pleasure to meet you, Rachel. And someday, Sue, I will meet you too. I, I said when we were leaving, I'm like, you know what, Rachel? We need to just travel out there and go visit Sue. <laughs> that would be a total gas. That's what I did Sunday. And uh, like I said, Monday and Tuesday, I, Monday mostly, I finished up that second project and I got that to the person that needed it. And then today I worked on... Um, <sighs> several things. I'm designing my uh, October Patreon charts, which, oh my gosh. Okay. So I love Patreon so much. We have so much fun in there. I do live videos. Uh, I give them sneak peeks. They get insider information about my fabric lines that are coming up. And the live videos are like my favorite part of it. I've been getting in antique samplers and so I either go live with them or I pre-record opening, unboxing the antique sampler. And anyways, it's just a lot of fun. But I did sampler September for their charts for September, which were intense designing. And so for October, I'm like, I'm going to go a little more simple and prim. And I have sketched out the three most prim, cute, autumnal designs that I cannot wait. I'm, I just started this morning to design the first one. Uh, the first of the month on the first of every month is when I uh, delete the prior month's charts and then I add the new month month's charts. So anyways, I design four patterns, a four charts a month, three are for the different tiers and then the fourth one is an ornament that they get to purchase for five dollars in a password protected secret shop that's full of all kinds of products that's only available to patreon members so yeah it keeps me busy but i love it i love it so much if you are interested in patreon i'll have a link below if you want to just go check it out it's very easy to join it's very easy to move from tier to tier if you want to go up a tier down a tier whatever i've had people that join there's four tiers, okay? $2, $8, $13, and $20. If you join the $20 tier, you get everything. Everything. You'll get three charts a month, you know, and, and everything that everyone else gets. And So I'm not going to go into it too much, but, um, oh, I had something I wanted to say specifically, and now I don't remember. Oh, yeah, and you can cancel any time, you know. Um, you can join anytime. Some people leave because of financial issues and then like two months or three months later, I see they come back and it's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's not a lifelong commitment. Although some people, you know, they'll join and they'll, that's what I was going to say. Some people will join and like two months later, they'll go, I just want to pay for a year and not have this monthly fee. Because if you pay for a year, you save 15%. So that's pretty significant if you know you love it and you want to stay. So anyways, just that was my little shout out about patreon because we do have a lot of fun over there i think i'm gonna go it's getting really windy out there i don't know if you can hear it Ooh, and it's lightning <laughs> i love a good thunderstorm though and i cannot believe it is so dark in my studio i can't believe you can even see me hopefully it's not too grainy but that's my cube my dog's freaking out she does not like thunderstorms she's you can't really see her but she's laying there shaking in her shoes poor baby so i'm gonna go and then i'll be back tomorrow to show you what i've been working on uh stitch wise i did actually do some stitching at the retreat thanks to was it linda or jean i think it was actually jean from the attic this that on the very last night she's like oh you should come down and stitch with us and i was like oh i'm so tired <laughs> so i went down there and stitched and I just did fill in because I didn't want to count because number one, I was exhausted. Number two, we're all, you know, visiting and talking and I, 
I have a hard enough time counting when I'm not distracted. So I did fill in. And then Liz Matthews sitting next to me, which was awesome. And got to, you know, visit with her a little bit more. And then uh, Elizabeth Ann Constitch came down. I say their whole entire, like, floss tube name because that way you know who I'm talking about. But um, it was just fun. It was just fun to sit around and visit and, and we laughed and, and uh, Jean's like now aren't you glad you came down here <laughs> and I'm like yes I am absolutely so okay I'm gonna go I will see you tomorrow hey friends I am back it now is Wednesday afternoon about 3 20 September 21st yes and I wanted to finish recording this this morning but we had thunderstorms again this morning which was just crazy we don't, I don't know. I love a good thunderstorm though, so I took some pretty cool video. Uh, I wanted to mention that thing I held up, let me grab it. And I was uncertain that this was a sugar mold. I looked it up and it is indeed a sugar mold. I thought it was, but then when I said that, I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So I had to check it out. So I'm gonna just show you some pictures of really neat things that people are doing with those for decorating and i want to get more of them now <laughs> so let's check it out this is super cool they have they've alternated candles and pumpkins and gourds i gotta get my face out of there <laughs> pumpkins and gourds on the tabletops these sugar molds come in all kinds of shapes not shapes I'm sorry sizes like lengths the bottle brush trees how cute is that for Christmas having I would have them kind of tucked down in the holes or maybe have you know candles in between so I just wanted to share with you uh, different things that you can do with those and I've seen those at antique stores before but they just never appealed to me until this time and now I'm like oh I gotta get more of them they would be so cute set around the house um, but I really think putting a stitched piece on the front like if it was a Christmas stitched piece I could have two bottle brush trees sticking out of it I mean it would be just so cute so all right I want to go over uh, my whips with you my cross stitch whips and then I'm gonna insert a video of the chair that I'm painting for a charity and then I have a little bit of haul from things that I purchased at the retreat and then I think we're just gonna wrap it up so let's go over my whips I actually went to do some punch needle this morning but I didn't have a threader I, I was so sad I'm like I wanted to make progress on that so badly, but I will definitely be doing that. And I have a new start as well. First, I'm going to talk about Strawberry Manor, which is a mystery sale that I'm doing with the Tier 4 Patreon members, the True Blue Whimsies. I'm stitching this on XU Design 40 Count Aged Hazelnut. I will insert a picture of where I was last time and now you can see where I am now. So I have to finish the alphabet at the top there, finish the border going down the side, and then I just released part five, which is the part under the house. So it comes down to like maybe right here and it's, it's like maybe that big. So that dropped on September 15th. So yeah, I think it's turning out so pretty. I love the colors. I love that strawberry red, Cheryl. Isn't that a beautiful strawberry color? <laughs> In case you missed it, Miss Cheryl, half of Stitching with the Sisterlies, she called that tomato red. I'm like, it's strawberry manor. It is strawberry red. <laughs> Oh, I just wanted to mention too, that when we are done with that sale, which will be the end of this year, I am going to release that 
at Nashville Market. So if you're in tier four in my Patreon, you get it for free, you can stitch along with us. Even if you don't stitch along, you can you know, just download. When I release the last part, you can download the whole thing and just keep it and stitch it some other time. But it will be released in March at the Nashville Market. And but what I, uh, let me back up. <laughs> when I finish the sale, I will keep it up for like a week for everyone to get it downloaded in tier four and then I'm going to delete all of it, okay? So basically it's a perk if you're in tier four to do a stitch along with me and then when it's done, I delete it all and then I release it to the public. But it, as a tier four member, you have the option of getting it as a perk for being a true blue whimsy. Now, when I was at the Quilters Station Retreat, the Cross Stitch Extravaganza, I actually did some stitching. And it was all fill in because it was Saturday night and that was the day I presented. So, I don't know, it takes a lot out of me, you guys. Like, I'm an introvert, so spending, you know, a lot of time in a big group of people it just it really drains me some people some people feed off it an extrovert would feed off that and and it would give them more energy and an introvert it drains them and we went out to dinner after the end of at the end of the day at the end of the retreat went out to dinner and uh, Jean encouraged me as well as Linda encouraged me to come down and stitch for a while and so I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I mean, I wanna make the most of every retreat I go to and spend as much time possible as possible with everybody that I can. So I went down there and I was so glad I had something to work on that I could fill in. It wasn't a ton, but we're chit-chatting and everything. So I think getting any stitching done was good. I think I filled all these little scallops here. I filled all of those in and I think I, finished up his tail kind of right in that spot there. But anyways, this is turning out fabulous. I love these folk art birds. Oh Lord, when am I stitching this on? Hopefully I have it written down on my pattern. This is what it looks like in its entirety like that. It's going to take me forever to get it done, but it's called 1810 folk art. This was a Patreon design for, I want to say August, maybe? No, it wasn't August. August August was Halloween. Must have been um, July. I have the piece of, right here. I'm stitching that on Needle and Flax 40 Count Dolly Madison. And it is the absolute perfect primitive kind of sampler color for this piece. Everything is showing up beautifully on it. So I'm very happy with that. I have two more pieces in here that were released, not released, but were uh, for Patreon that same month. And I'm gonna send these two out to be stitched. So let me just show you what they are real quick though, cause I love them. And I'll show you the fabrics too. So I'm gonna be sending these out like soon soon and very soon so this is one create in me a clean heart that one is going to be stitched on needle and flax dirty teacup so can you just see oh won't that be awesome yeah so i'm gonna send that out to get stitched hopefully friday Today's Wednesday, I have the, the grandkids tomorrow. Well, Friday I am going to my friend's house to help her decorate, or help her with the flowers. She's, their daughter's, their daughter is getting married and um, they're having the reception at their house. So I'm going over there Friday at 10 a.m. to help with the flowers. This is the other piece. Common looking people are the best in the world. That's why the Lord makes so many of them. And that's going to be stitched on Grandma's sleeve by XU Designs. And I think it's gonna be awesome. 
it's gonna look really old which is what I want what I love about this design is the ghosty little motifs in the background the flowers and the bird I love it so I don't know we'll have to see <laughs> if this actually is going to be the best choice dirty teacup might have actually went out for that one as well we shall see this is called teach my heart it is again a patreon design i mean the reason i'm stitching a lot of patreon designs is because i either have to have a model stitcher stitch them or i stitch them this is an antique reproduction and i really want to do it myself just because i want to be fully absorbed in that whole process not just reproducing it and charting it but also stitching it this was uh, Sampler September in Patreon. I designed samplers. And Tier 4 got the reproduction sampler. I'm stitching... Oh, I don't even have a picture. Well, let me just show you the actual antique instead. So here is the antique that I reproduced. Right now, through September 30th, if you're in Tier 4, you can download this as part of your membership. So that's what it looks like. I'll just show you up close where I'm starting. Yep, in that corner is where I started. It says, If I am right, thy grace impart still in the right to stay. If I am wrong, oh, teach my heart to find the better way. I called it better way at first, but I don't like that name, so I changed it to teach my heart because I just think that has a nicer sound to it. I'm stitching on 40 count, of course, because that is my fave. This is Fox and Rabbit. Oh, Lord. Um, hold on, guys. Hold, please. <laughs> what I did is I have all these swatches from Fox and Rabbit. So thank you, Karen and Bren, for sending me all your swatches. So I held this up to the sampler and this was the closest match. So then I took, that's the back. Then I took, oh, I'm sorry, this is called baked clay. Fox and Rabbit baked clay. So then I took DMC and I color matched as best as I could and then I stitched it on to bake clay to make sure that the colors were as close as possible. Then I sent a list of the DMC, whoopsie. Then I sent a list of the DMC colors to Jean at the attic and I asked her to do a silk conversion for me. So I'm stitching it in silk and I must say, I'm thoroughly, 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 thoroughly enjoying stitching in silk. I mean, I have only got one knot so far and it just it's just as a dream to stitch on so I have a very minute start I really wanted to get down to the blue I love how the colors are kind of ghosty and that's how they are on the original uh, antique so you know so far I think these colors are looking amazing the variegation in the silks are just perfect when i get this done i'm going to release it immediately no idea when that's going to be i would like to release it at market but i'm not going to pressure myself i'm not going to pressure myself i had a message from somebody at the retreat i'm not going to say names but I had someone come up to me after my presentation and I was, you know, signing patterns and signing the Halloween book and stuff like that and just visiting with people. It was really fun. And as that kind of died down, I had a wonderful sweet lady come up to me and she asked me if I believe in messages from God. And she said, like, not hearing his voice necessarily, but, and I kind of interrupted her, interrupted her. I'm like, oh, I absolutely believe in that. I totally believe in God whispers is what Rachel, I, when I met with um, Rachel from Floss Toss, Treehouse Fiber Arts, we were talking about it. I shared it with her and she called a God whisper and I'm like, oh, I love that. It's not like you hear his voice, but you, you sense it and you know, 
you know you're getting a message. Anyways, she had this message for me. <laughs> and she said, I was really apprehensive about coming up to you about this because I, she, you know, obviously she didn't know how I would take it, if I would be, you know, receptive to it or would it freak me out or would I think she's crazy? You know what I mean? I mean, it took a lot for her to do this, okay? Well, she was kind of on the fence about bringing it up to me. But then, I don't, I can't remember exactly what she said. I think she said when I was going around table to table and visiting with everybody and introducing myself, when I got to her table, she got another God whisper saying, you need to share this with her. So when you get two messages from God about something, you better do it right. <laughs> so she bravely came up to me and we, she said, this is the message that I was given. You need to slow down. I get the goosebumps every single time I say it. So that's why, that's why I said, when I get that done, I'll release it. I'd love it to be done by market, but I'm, I'm going to enjoy stitching it. There's quite a bit of one over one in it. And I'm just going to enjoy the stitch. And so it might be market 2024. I don't know. It might not come out at market at all. Basically, when I am done with it, I'm going to get it framed and then I'm going to release it. I decided that's how I'm going to handle my antique samplers. I'm just going to release them once I either get them done, you know, done stitching them or if I send them out to a model stitcher. And when I get it back and get it framed, I'm going to release it. I don't care what month it is. Just going to do it then. Thank you for the message. You know who you are. <laughs> I'm assuming, I guess I'm assuming you're watching. Maybe you're not, but uh, I appreciate the message. And you know, what if she hadn't given me the message and then, you know, something happened, you know, like I actually didn't think of that. I was telling someone about it and they're like, oh, what if she didn't say that to you? And, and then like you had a heart attack or something. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, whoa. <laughs> That hadn't occurred to me at the time. But anyways, I appreciate you sharing that with me. And, uh, you know, I, I have been saying that I need, that something has to give. I've said it in my live videos, in Patreon. I've said it to Kevin. Like, I don't know what is going to give, but something's going to give. And I really don't want it to be my health, basically. I am stretched way too thin right now. The only thing I can think of to give up at this moment, because I've already committed to painting the chair for the charity auction dinner. I've already said yes. I can't back out on these things, especially something like that where I'm helping to raise money for a really important and good cause. Uh, I can't back out of retreats. I've already committed and, you know, they're counting on me and I want to do the retreats. Patreon is... I love it so much. I'm not backing off on Patreon <laughs> because, um, you know, that's a commitment as well to all of my whimsies, you know. What I can back off on is having these monstrous releases at Needlework Expo and at Market. I come out with a lot of designs. I don't need to come out with that many designs, even though... I love, I love charting. I love, you know, sending them out. And when they, when I get them back from the model stitcher, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to release this. You know, like, oh, you know, so it's like, I just need to slow down on some of that stuff and not, you know, because especially after this needlework expo, you know, I felt bad because Kevin didn't get to go on the trip with me and he was working ridiculous hours, staying up so late in the studio, you know, cutting covers and folding and stuffing and just, it, it was really, really hard. He was getting kind of sick of it towards the end. And thank the Lord that Kyle is on board with us now because he would still be shipping orders. He would be if it wasn't for Kyle. So anyway, um, so I can't be doing these monster releases anymore and I need to I just need to back off that part of it and I, I needed to take care of my health. Let's put it that way. None of it's 
none of it's worth losing, you know, my health. So anyways, moving along. So those are my whips. Those are my cross stitch whips. Um, not a ton of progress, but you know, been just a little bit busy. <laughs> So one of my whips is the chair that I am working on for the charity auction dinner for the Catholic Charities of Flint. I'm working on it during What Should Paint Wednesday, which is at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Wednesday afternoon. And I just worked on that today, which is September 21st. This little scroll work up here is all going to be, it's all going to be like in these grays. And this halo is metallic silver. I don't know if you can see. But anyway, it's metallic silver. And all of the scroll is going to be grays, whites, and some metallics. And then it's going to say light of the world there. And then underneath it's going to say lamb of God. And I don't really know what I'm going to do at the bottom. Probably just more scroll work. And then the front of it is the angel. I haven't worked on her anymore. Um, I just needed an idea for the back. So she's going to actually be holding a candle. I have a real rough drawing outline of it. But I'm going to have her holding a candle, and so it's, that's going to be real bright, and the rest of it's going to be darker. So that's where that stands for now. Now I want to share with you some things that I got either in the mail or that I picked up from the trunk shows at the retreat. I'll be right back. I have some, uh, not haul, what do you call it? Happy mail that I want to share with you before I do that haul part. Cindy Sorley from, was it, oh my gosh, I just blanked out. Stitchery Express, is that it? Stitchery Express, oh my gosh, seriously, Oh, I had to grab my, I had to grab my tripod because the dogs just ran underneath it. One second, she, sells fabric flare fabric flare fabric is printed fabric okay so one side is printed and the other side is not here is she sent me a bunch of pieces for designing on look at that one i should probably have that thing behind it oh i don't want this video to be three hours so i'm going to go through these kind of quickly but I want you all to see how pretty that is. It's got spider webs on it, but they're like shimmery kind of gold and copper colors. Very pretty. This is 32 count even weed. It's called even weave. It's called light wood. It's got like a barn wood kind of whitewash pattern on it. That first one with the spider webs on it, let me see if there's a name on it. No. Cobwebs. Cobwebs on parchment is the name of that first one. I better leave that out. This is Dreams on Dreams on Butter, I guess. I don't know. But it's stars. But isn't that cool? Watercolor Dreams on Buttermilk is the name of this one. So in case you, you know, are looking to purchase that from her, you'll have the name. This one is just called Cobwebs. Oh wait, maybe this is Cobwebs on Parchment. I don't know now, because to me this looks more like Parchment, but this is called Cobwebs. More of a yellow cast to it. I'm not sure if these are going to show up color-wise, but it's more about seeing the pattern, I think, too. 32 count even wheat. 
even weave old Liberty marble. That's cool. That's very cool. I like that. It looks kind of washed out on the screen, but you can see how yellow this is compared to it. It's always best to hold something next to it, I think. This is, I think these are all 32 count even weave. This one is pale, pale parchment. Oh, I like it's got almost like a, like it's got water damage or something. It's kind of cool. I'll hold up that, hold up this cobweb one that's more yellow so you can see it's got more of a peach tone to it. I don't design a lot on 32 count. I, I'm really a 40 count stitcher. But for some of my smaller designs, you know, that aren't samplers, maybe a Santa or something like that, 32 count's good. Blizzard on parchment. Ooh, this is good for snow. That is cool, isn't it? So I'm holding that cobweb one up to it. But that's that's pretty cool. I really like that. I have a feeling this video is not going to go up today. Well, this is pale parchment, so I'll hold up the other parchment with it so you can see the difference. The top one is pale parchment. And the bottom one is just regular. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so anyway, we have pale parchment and regular parchment. But they have like a, it's kind of like watermark on it. It's very cool. Candy corn galore. Which is pretty much on a white background. And then we have, this must be Haunted Witch. I think it doesn't say on there, but it's the only one. Oh no, this is Watercolor Dreams on Purple. I don't, Watercolor Dreams on Purple. Remember we had the Watercolor Dreams on buttermilk, which is this one. And then if you're a fan of purple for Halloween, that would be very cool. Oh, duh, I know what Haunted Witch is. Last but not least, I cannot tell you how shocked I am. <laughs> at how large this piece is. Remember I showed you, I think it was in my last video, I showed you someone, I can't remember her name now, so sorry, but she had stitched my fabulous monsters and they are kind of creeping along. This, which was super cool. Look how large this is, this is my hand. So this is a big piece of fabric. Well, what a statement piece for Halloween though. If you had, you know, and I'm doing more Fabulous Monsters. If you had like the whole row of Fabulous Monsters and then someone said, you need to do, you know, a witch or something. Well, there's already a witch here. So I was thinking you could stitch stars up here in like one of these colors or bats. You know, you could have other things up here in the sky if you wanted. But I think a whole row of the Fabulous Monsters sneaking across the lawn would be very cool. Thank you, Cindy, for sending all those to me. That is exciting. Another super sweet stitchy kindness from my friend Denise of Dot Dot Goose Designs. Guess what is out in the world now, guys? Stitchy Birds fabric is out in the world. And Denise is hot on it, it's making all kinds of bags. Follow her. I'll link her below, but you got to follow her on instagram and make sure you like her etsy shop so that you know when she has new bags available 
love that color zipper for this and then she gave me the little thread pal as well super handy i love these things i think all bags should come with one of these thread pals she calls it but thread beds are another name so yeah i'm like stoked about having stitchy birds thank you so much denise one more thing before i do the haul <laughs> Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine Fall issue came out. I got it, I don't know, one day of this past week. Love it so much. So I want to share with you. I haven't actually even looked through the whole thing. But here's my page. Here's my page. Da da da. And. It was in the little video I showed earlier of all my Halloween stuff. When rich, when riches, when witches go riding and black cats are seen, the moon laughs and whispers, "Tis near Halloween." That saying is so great. That's on antique postcards. I know other. Uh, designers have made Halloween designs with that saying. I mean, it's so cool. But this basically goes along with my antique postcard inspired designs that I have been doing lately. I think for over a year now I've been coming out with them. So yeah, I think it's super cute. So yeah, if you don't have the... Oh, by the way, this was stitched... Mm-hmm. Jeez, Lou. It, I just escaped my mind. I was going to say Nathan Grogan because he has stitched some of those pillows for me, but I don't think he stitched that one. I'm sorry, Karen. It was stitched by Karen Simmons. <laughs> She's in Ohio. And then, of course, finished by the wonderful Vanna Pfeiffer with her amazing talent. I sent her this super cool homespun for the back. And I sent her the Rick Rack. I'm not sure which Rick Rack that is. I want to say Lady Dot Creates Vintage Rick Rack. 30 inches. If you don't have a subscription to the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, I need to do it. You need to do it. Carolina Cross Stitcher. If you're not following her on Instagram, you need to. Her husband's business is Pete's B Skeps. This is their information. Let me just hold that up so you can see it. In case I forget to link it below. But look, guys. Look at this super cool B-scap. These scissors were actually in the cross-stitch the, uh, cross extravaganza uh, bag that Rita gave everybody at the retreat. You know, you got a pair of scissors in there as well. Look how cool this is. So yes, I'm so happy I'm showing this to you now so that I can take it up to the house and have it sitting next to my little stitchy spot. I love it. It's so quality made. I mean, just beautiful. When I was at the retreat, I had, we all had trunk shows, all of us designers. Well, Alma didn't, but, uh, I purchased from both of my, all three, I should say, four, three, three. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Chessie and me, Linda. I love her work and I really love needle books. And I, if I'm going to stitch something of somebody else's, it's got to be small. And so <laughs> this I purchased because look at how cute that is. It's called a gentle woman's stitch box. Then I purchased uh, Miss Nettie's needle use needle usefuls. So there's a needle book, a little pin cushion, and another scissor fob. I mean, if I'm going to collect scissors, I might as well make little scissor fobs to go with all of my scissors, right? But look how cute that needle book is. I love that fabric. What is that fabric? I'm right here, 32 count vintage exemplar linen from Lakeside Linens. I hope I can get some. <laughs> I know you've heard it a million times, but I'm gonna say it again. There's nothing like seeing the models in person. It's what I love about going to Nashville. 
it's absolutely amazing or going into a store that has a lot of models seeing hello from liz matthews bittersweet village in person i was like what the what it's very folk arty it is so cute with those houses on the leaves i mean it's just everything that i love i love the colors everything stitch count 104 by 96 so it's not huge and then miss kathy barrick oh my goodness okay so when i saw her new release video that her and liz did together and she showed this i was like i have to have that it is called witch training academy but when i saw it in person and i saw the size of it i was like oh my gosh i thought it was huge even though they're holding it up in the video you can kind of compare it to the hand their the size of their hand or their face or something i still can't grasp it until i see it in person the stitch count on this is 104 nope that was Liz's, uh, 144 by 154. On a 40 count, it's 7 and an eighth inch by 7 5 eighths inch, which is small. It's so dang cute. And that large witch in the center, oh my gosh, she is just a doll. The last bit I want to show you is, oh gal, you know, I'm probably not going to go through all this. Let me just say, I went crazy at Coulter Station. Linda from Chessie and Me, myself, and Rita busted over to the store. Rita had to go back to do some stuff, and I was getting ready to go over. And she goes, well, you can ride with me. And then Linda's like, cool, I'm going to. <laughs> so all three of us went over to the shop, and I made a beeline for the linen. I got some... I'll just show them in the bag. I mean, these are some of these are just basic. I might get out a couple out of the bag. But anyway, this is Weigart 40 count raw linen. So it's just a nice sampler gray color or grayish. This is r, r Reproduction Patriots Blue. Oh, Patriots Brew. I thought of something I wanted to talk to you guys about. It's about the Halloween sampler. Oh, I'll have to do that after this. All right, so this color would be absolutely perfect for the Halloween sampler. If you bought the Hello Halloween book, this would work if you can't get XU Design. She's probably run out of it by now. <laughs> this was the closest that I could come to. We have, I have some other ideas as well. This is the 36 count old linen that I had it stitched on, which is more gray. But look how close. I mean, it's a little bit more gray, but it's really, really close. I purchased Fiber on a Whim Espresso 40 count. Look at that. Ooh, that's coming in really good. This is Weigart Dark Cobblestone, 40 count. Look at how dark that is. It's so good. So, so good. Zweigart Sahara, 36 count. I wanted that in 40 count, but they didn't have it. Now that's showing up real yellow. It's not yellow, it's orange. It is absolutely, maybe if I put something else with it, it absolutely is orange and it would be perfect for Halloween. It's, it's showing a little more orange there. Weeks Dye Works Beige. I mean, a lot of these you guys already know, clearly. That is a great color for samplers or anything. I mean, anything. Fiber on a Whim, Fibers on a Whim Persimmon. That's beautiful. Oh yeah, that's coming in good. I can't really... Yeah, it's a little more pink. So it would be really nice for spring. Like if you're doing bunnies or something like that. Ooh, I love it. Persimmon. That's a really good one. Then I've got... Okay, so these Atomic Ranch. This is a new one, so I want to get those out of the bags to show you. Picture this plus... Bramble, 36 count. I love Bramble. 
I absolutely love it. It's it's just such a nice neutral. I just got some not too long ago, 40 count. So Zweiger and um, it's 36 count summer khaki. So the the Zweigart ones are they're not modeled, you know, they're just a straight up color. But sometimes you want, you know, maybe you don't want modeling on it. Weeks uh, straw, that's a very popular color. I love that one too. R and R Barb's blend. This is a 40 count R and R Barb's blend. There you go. That's pretty accurate. Love it. And then I think I only got one. So Atomic Ranch is a new dyer. New to me anyway. I've never heard of them. This is cobblestone. 40 count cobblestone. So I'm going to hold it up. Let me see. Let's see if I can find one that's similar. It's kind of similar to Bramble from Picture This Plus, but it's just a shade darker. This is Bramble. And this is Atomic Ranch right here. I mean, that's like, wow. If you want some picture this plus bramble, but you can't get your hands on it, now you know you can buy Atomic Ranch, what I say, cobblestone. And it's pretty much the same, so that's cool. I have not stitched on that fabric, obviously, because I just learned about them. We shall see. It looks like it would be easy to stitch on. So there you go. That was quite a nice linen haul. You can never have too much linen. <laughs> like, especially as a designer, I need to be, I need to make sure I don't run out of linen. So I think I'm sitting pretty good after that.
get my notes about the Halloween sampler. This is what I wanted to share with y'all because the Halloween sampler from the Hello Halloween book is blowing up the internet, <laughs> kind of, I mean, in our little cross-stitch world anyways. And I'm concerned about the fabric, availability of the fabric, number one, but also somebody came to me at the retreat and showed me the old linen on the XU site. Now, when I purchased the 36 count old linen, which was what that was stitched on, that was like two years ago. I purchased it two years ago. The person that I purchased from, who knows how long she might have had it. Having said that, you know, that is a hand dyed linen. So those things change, it can change. I'm just gonna tell you some other linens that would work that are similar to that, or maybe they're not super close, you know, exact or whatever, but would look amazing. I'm doing this so that we spread the wealth amongst a lot of linen dyers. Also, it will help you with availability of those linens, which is amazing because I'm glad that was stitched on 36 count because I know 40 count is getting hard to come by. Let's just go over them. I want to give a big shout out and thanks to Jean from the attic because she helped me. Uh, well, first I went to Culture Station and I bought all that fabric I just showed you. And when I got back, I'm like, oh, I wonder if any of these would match. And that's when I found the, was it, what did I say? Patriots Brew? Yeah, the R&R &R Patriots Blue Brew. I keep saying blue. Patriots Brew is like almost spot on. But Jean had some other suggestions. She said that Needle and Flax Thornfield would look good. Needle and Flax Alcott. Needle and Flax Dirty Teacup. Now, Dirty Teacup is not going to look like what I have mine stitched on, but it would look really cool because it's splotchy. Another one that would be really, really great is Fox and Rabbit Saltbush. Even though it's more gray, you might have to darken your green color, but it would make it really vintage looking too. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a really good match. Fox and Rabbit Mayflower. A little bit lighter, but very, very close. Very, very close. Like I said, the reason I'm doing this is because Did I say flannel flower? Ooh, that would be good too. Uh, just because of availability of these linens. This is much lighter, but flannel flower would work too. That's really pretty. Last, but definitely not least, is LFA Linens, our wonderful friends, Rachel and Sue from Legacy Fiber Arts, Boston Tea Party. Oh yes, that is going to be gorgeous as well for this piece. Look how good it matches and look at that beautiful modeling. I'm so glad that I did this because now you have several options. And what I will do also is in the description box below, I will list all of these linens and the linen dyers that you can then go and shop from and uh, you'll be able to get your favorite fabric. So, okay, I think that's it, my Lord. Plans just to survive, <laughs> just to survive. Uh, I have to go because my handsome son, Kyle, is calling. He probably wants to know how his dog is doing because he misses his dog as much as I miss my dog when I'm away. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all your support and your love and your comments. And we will see you, I don't know when, a week, two weeks. We'll see. Bye.